describe constituent services. Yes, sir. What is your role as a, as a lawmaker, and how many resolutions have you introduced? I haven't written any resolutions, um, but uh, have been involved in some resolutions, uh, consultations with different legislators and, and, um, and working that way. And I, th I feel basically um, we're, we're the kind of voice for the people. And um, we bring things, uh, concerns, um, to our, our fellow legislators and, and work together um, with the legislators and with the administration uh, to advance uh, programs and services that benefit our people. What's the proudest one that you have advanced? The, the proudest one that, that we've, we've done How about um, you? Is, is probably the, um, the Pulse Valley Treatment Center. And, and that is because in my family's um, extended family, um, there's been some uh, issues with addiction. And it doesn't just affect the, the person with the, 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 the disease, uh, the illness, um, but it affects the whole family and extended family as well. Um, so that one was really close to my heart and I'm, I'm probably most proud of that uh, in uh, dealing with Jay Keel and uh, his vision for that has been been long, okay. long served. Okay. Let me ask about education. You talk about $15 million in educational funds that's been allocated. What's the ratio of the federal versus the tribe? Um, I'm not sure what the, what the ratio is. Uh, I could definitely find that out and, and get that to you. Well, also, there's been talk about accountability, uh, transparency and things of that nature. Do you think that term limits would be in order? No, my feeling on term limits is, is I think elections serve as a term limit in a way. Um, the legislators obviously uh, run for re-election every three years. Uh, if a legislator is not doing their job, is not responsive to the people, um, is not uh, fulfilling their obligation of service and accountability, and uh, letting the people know what's going on, uh, making themselves available, then um, that they'll be voted out of office. But you're suggesting then the career politicians? No, not at all. I, I wouldn't say I was suggesting that at all. Any other questions? You can probably tell from the questions I asked before that transparency is a big deal. For example, the few times that I've attempted to find something out about uh, the total gaming revel revenues and total expenditures in various areas of the, of the gaming operations to really get a good handle on what monies are coming back to the tribe, it's, it's virtually impossible to tell. Uh, there, there has to be a way to improve transparency, not only in in a business operation like that, but in the operation of the of the various departments of the tribe to be able to just tell what is being spent where. And as uh, as Mike Watson said, if you can't even figure out how many people are voting in a tribal election because the election department will give you the information. Something is wrong. Something's bad wrong. What would you do about that? Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, um, on the trans <laughs> transparency <laughs> issue, um, <laughs> we make the, the information available through the times. Um, if you have specific information, I would suggest that you contact a uh, legislator if you're in the Pontoc district, uh, myself or one of the other Pontoc legislators, and, uh, and we would be able to help you uh, find that information out. Um, as far as the, the uh, voting issue, uh, candidates can request activity reports, and, uh, and uh, they get the voter list and everything uh, through there, so you can see how many people are, are uh, uh, registered to vote and, and vote in the election. So. That shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue. Toby Edwin also. Yes. Uh, we bought the naming rights to the ballpark in, in Oklahoma City. How much did we pay for those? 
and where we, what's the justification for us being able to name a ballpark? I, I, I believe it was $100,000 <coughs> naming rights. I'm not absolutely certain, but I think that that is correct. And it, it's part of our, our, our tourism initiative um, to uh, direct people to our, our uh, industries, uh, whether it's the gaming industry, uh, uh, cultural center, uh, Bedray Chocolate Factory that's going to be uh, opening up soon, uh, just the different, different areas uh, to make the Chickasaw country, Chickasaw nation, a destination and, um, and increase the uh, brand awareness and, and uh, in that, that avenue. Is there a justification in putting money into the, uh, what's the place you're going tomorrow, the boating thing? Devon Boathouse. Devon Boathouse, Oklahoma City. I, I, I see justification there in the, the River Sport programs that our, uh, our Chickasaw youth are able to access um, through that well, program. Okay. We're talking about some spending of money now. What about the housing for athletes with that would we, we contribute money to it at the OU? How does that benefit us? I'm, I'm not familiar with that. I'm sorry. Any other questions? I have one. All right. Uh, my name is Adrian John, and I'm a senior at East Central in Ada. Um, last semester, well not last semester, but I think it was last fall, um, you know, Chickasaw Nation helps me with uh, paying for my school. And you know, you said education, and I'm happy you care about that, you know. I'm glad that they helped me. One problem that I had was uh, they usually helped me purchase my books, you know, books are expensive with uh, college. And uh, I went two months without being able to get my books because I was waiting on them. And uh, I just didn't know who to go to. We would go to the uh, people at the, was it Higher Ed for Chickasaw mm -hmm. Nation? And they, should, they would just say they were working on it. And so I went, you know, I was behind in about two or three chapters in all my classes because yeah, work, yeah. and in my vocational rehab uh, worker she had to just get the money out of her own pocket to uh, so I could purchase my books but like I said I went two months without my I went two months without my books and I just went up could I talk to y'all you know like, absolutely okay. that that's exactly what we're here for okay. is to um, help with situations like that. Okay. Um, That's and not I'm, such a great answer. We're working on it. I agree. It's not. Toby, why is it that with a young man like this or any Chickasaw, why is it that upon birth that a trust fund is not set up for that student, potential student, and when they become his age, he's in school, the money is there. I teach at a college and I hear this all the time. They need the money in August. They're not getting it until November. That doesn't make any sense. That's a that's a good point. But this has been going on forever, Toby. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, that is a good point that you bring up. Um, but it is a thing to be said is if I'm reelected, I will do something about it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Education is of huge importance, and, and I think we need to constantly look for new ideas and ways to, to better our education system. And I would certainly look at, at all of those avenues and, and work towards, towards uh, improving our program. I think we do a great job. Are there areas for improvement? Obviously, but, um, but absolutely. Um, as a, a junior legislator, I've only been in office uh, about half a term, Philip Paul Easterling's term, and she resigned. Um, <coughs> you have to serve as a legislator for a full year before you can assume um, committee chair uh, positions and uh, look forward to, uh, in my next term, with your help, um, assuming more of a leadership role in uh, those type of issues with education, with finance, uh, and uh, just would appreciate uh, your consideration for sure.